Hello everyone and welcome. Nearly three months into the current COVID-19 crisis, testing continues to be a limitation. According to the CDC, nearly 15 million tests have been performed in the US so far as of May 26 last week. But still it is not close to where it needs to be. This is because there is an expectation that as we try to reopen our economy, people begin to return to work, we will need to test and retest individuals frequently over a period of time. So we will need a lot more tests on a daily basis. FDA has authorized over a hundred different types of tests, but most of them can be conducted only in high complexity labs and require sample collection by a trained professional. So there's a limitation and I've talked about that limitation in great detail in one of my videos. You can find that video on my YouTube channel. So in this video, I want to talk about some of the emerging thinking at the FDA, how they are trying to solve this problem and what they are trying to prioritize with test developers and laboratories. And in particular, I want to talk about a very exciting development. It's about a home test kit that has been authorized by the FDA. So these are all steps in the right direction. Let's look into this. As I mentioned before, more than 100 tests have been authorized so far, but most of them have been molecular tests or RT-PCR tests. They are very accurate, but they require trained people, highly complex laboratories. 12 antibody tests have been authorized. They are used later on in the infection to detect the immune response to the infection. They don't diagnose whether you have the infection or not, but they tell us if somebody was infected and had they have recovered. So they're important tests too. And only one antigen test has been authorized. So the emerging thinking based on what I have learned from FDA's virtual town hall meetings, which by the way are fantastic. They are very transparent, very open, and they share a lot of information and answer a lot of questions. So they have been talking for a couple of weeks now how they are really prioritizing at-home collection and testing. Saliva-based tests is a big topic of discussion, although studies are still going on to figure out the reasons for variation, variability in those type of samples. They're talking about rapid point of care testing and antigen tests because they can be scaled up very inexpensively, made available at point of care for very rapid testing. And remember only one has come out so far. So more to come in that area. Finally, they are also talking about more options for swabs. We have heard a limitation and shortage of swabs. So they're talking about 3D printing and authorizing that manufacturing method for 3D printing of swabs. So this is all step in the right direction. Let's talk about the first home collection kit that has been authorized by the FDA. It is from this company which has a lot of experience with home test kits. They make test kits for food sensitivity, for HIV testing, for all kind of uh, uh, fertility testing. So they have a lot of different tests and a lot of experience. For, for COVID-19, it is available to patients who match the criteria in a screening questionnaire that will be evaluated by a third party physician because it's still a prescription test. You have to first get it evaluated by the physician. And it's based on your symptoms, exposure, and medical history. If you are having acute symptoms, this is not the right test for you. You need to contact the doctor and go to the hospital directly. But if you have mild symptoms, or if you think that you have been in contact with someone who might have had COVID-19, then this is the right test for you. But still, you have to get it evaluated by the physician. And it's not available to patients in Maryland, New Jersey, New York, or Rhode Island. Specimens will be self-collected nasal swabs, and I've seen their instruction for use, which is very simple. And like I said, the company has a lot of experience collecting this type of uh, samples from home kits and uh, patients at home. Testing will be done at designated high complexity labs using an FDA authorized RT-PCR test. That test should be specifically indicated for use for this type of home kits and nasal swabs as a specimen. And finally, incoming samples will be checked against a checklist. And if everything passes out, the testing will proceed. The company has committed to the FDA to continue doing a usability assessment. Now they have submitted some data based on past experience and FDA has accepted that data, but they are going to collect the use error rates for the first 1000 samples. And their threshold is 10% by error type. 
and they expect an overall success rate of greater than 90%. If it falls below 90%, they will take some actions. So this is definitely very exciting news and step in the right direction. It's not yet available. You can go to the company's website, sign up for alerts if you are interested. Uh, they are promising that the test kits will be available by end of this month and capacity will increase rapidly. Interestingly enough, you can place a bulk order. So I think their expectation is that many companies will buy these test kits for their employees over time. Not covered by insurance, so there's a cost associated with that and you can find that cost uh, very transparently uh, shown on their website. You can find all those details. I have two concerns. This is good news, but I still have two concerns about this. The first is that we don't know which designated laboratories will be performing these tests. We do not know which FDA authorized test they will be using. As I said, there are close to 100 molecular tests that have been authorized. They have all kind of accuracy, sensitivity and specificity performance. We don't know which one. How good are these going to be? And uh, coupled with at home collection, the level of uncertainty in these tests, we don't know much about that yet. We are hoping that companies past experience and FDA's authorization of tests will allow us to mitigate the risk somewhat. But we need to keep an eye on that. Secondly, usability. Again, a lot of experience the company has, but this is a new situation. We have already heard that sample collection, how it is collected, how it is stored can affect results. So it remains to be seen and sure enough, FDA is requiring the company to continue reporting false positives, false negatives, any adverse events or any unexpected uh, biosafety concerns. So that information will come out. So certainly there is a lot of risk, but the benefit is definitely there because we need rapid turnaround and quick testing at mass scale. So hopefully this will uh, improve the current situation with the limitation and testing. And over time, we will learn the real performance of this test. And hopefully FDA will keep a close eye on adverse events. Again, a lot of things are happening still at the same time, a lot of developments. The best way to keep in touch is to subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll quickly show you how. You can go to my YouTube channel, subscribe there, or you can follow me on LinkedIn. Whenever I post a video, I also provide a link for you to come back to my YouTube channel. Please send me your questions, your concerns, what you would like to know more about, and I will produce more video updates in future for you. Finally, thank you for your interest and attention, and I hope all of you are staying safe.